Hello and welcome to my channel. Thank you for popping in here. If you're new to my channel, please like and subscribe for me. If you find this content helpful, hit that notification bell so that you don't miss out on the next video. Comment below with any of your thoughts or topics you'd like me to cover and check out my website, consultingninja.tech. With that out of the way, let's take a look at PocketBase. I'm going to cover what PocketBase is. I'll show you how to get it set up and I'll also take a peek at the dashboard with you. And then lastly, as a bonus, I'm gonna cover some cool stuff that we can do using just some HTML files. So if that sounds like fun, stick around. We're gonna to get to it right now. So what is PocketBase? PocketBase says that it is an open source backend with everything included in one file. They definitely deliver on that. All you need in order to make use of PocketBase is a pre-built executable that you can find in the documentation section of their website. So on their main website here, if you click documentation, the very first thing that it takes you to is all of the pre-built executables for every operating system. When it comes to what you can do with PocketBase, you can use their real-time database. It is an embedded SQLite database. That makes it super lightweight, but you can still subscribe to real-time database events through a RESTish API. For authentication, PocketBase supports email and password authentication, but it also comes with support for OAuth2 via Facebook, Google, GitLab, and GitHub, with more being added regularly. For file storage, you can upload photos, audio, and video files to both local storage or an S3 bucket, and that's pretty straightforward. Uh, the admin dashboard is really helpful, and it lets you create and manage your collections. It also lets you upload files, view logs, and configure uh, different settings. One thing I'll point out here is that I don't know why they don't mention this, but this also comes with an email service that you can use to uh, send forgot password emails or registration emails. That is also included in the, the executable as well. In order to get this going, all you need to do, like I said, is go to the documentation section, find which version is right for you depending on your operating system. For me, it is the AMD Mac OS 64 and we need to download that zip file. Now, one thing that I'll point out here is that uh, Mac OS is now flagging this executable, so you're gonna have to go in and tell it that you still want to run it. So let's extract that here. Inside of the folder, all you'll see is that uh, we have a couple of MD files and then the executable. I'm going to put this, I'm gonna move these into a folder I called PB Setup. You can put it wherever you'd like. It does not matter. Just remember because we need to navigate to that directory using either your terminal or your command line. As I was saying, Mac OS is going to be a stinker and it's not gonna let you run this. So if you double click the executable, you'll get a warning saying it cannot be run because it's from an unidentified developer. If you just hit okay and go into your settings in your system preferences under security and privacy, if you click the general tab, down towards the bottom, there is a allow apps from, and then make sure that the second one is clicked. This will tell you any recently attempted apps, and you just have to click the open anyway. And now we can open it. Now that we have the security set up, uh, now we can actually run this from the command line. So back in our terminal, we need to go to our directory that we have this installed. So for me, that was PB setup. And then we type dot slash pocket base space serve. And you'll see that it fires up a server running on port 8090. The rest API runs at 8090 slash API. And then the admin dashboard runs in 8090 with the underscore. So in order to check out the dashboard, open up a tab in your browser and go to localhost port 8090 slash underscore. And the very first thing that you need to do is set up your email address and password. So go ahead and do that. I'm going to enter mine. This says use a strong password. Just make sure that you remember what it is because you're gonna need this password. 
Uh, I'm just going to, I'll tell you what mine is because this doesn't really matter. Uh, mine is going to be capital P B capital T E S T. So P capital P B test one, two, three exclamation point and ampersand. So P B test with a capital P, a capital B, a capital T, one, two, three, exclamation point, and asterisk. So now this is what the dashboard looks like. You'll see that it comes with a standard collection of users. So when you're setting up users for an application, you don't need to create a new collection. You can if you want, but it does come with one already. So pocket base by default comes with a user's collection, but you can create as many collections as you need simply by clicking the plus new collection button. You choose a name, a type, you have three available base, view, and auth, and then you add in your fields one at a time by clicking the plus new field button, choosing a type of field, and then giving that a name as well. Once you have as many fields as you need, you just click the create button and there is a new collection. From the dashboard, you can also manually create new records for that collection by clicking the plus new record button. You just need to fill out all of the required fields for that record and then click create. You can also duplicate or delete that collection by clicking the edit collection button and in the top right hand corner, clicking the duplicate or delete. One of the coolest things about PocketBase to me is got to be the API preview. When you're working with a collection, you can click the API preview button and that will open this window that gives you an example for each action that you might need to perform on that collection, the way of interacting with it. So that was super cool and super helpful. And all of the examples are real. So definitely super helpful to see that for each action. Inside of the logs and after having ran a few commands, here you can see it shows you the graph of, of requests and you can also see each individual request coming in. Those are all logged with all the relevant information there as well. So pretty cool stuff. And then we have our settings. You have application settings. You can change the application URL if you want. You have all of your mail settings in here file storage settings. So if you need to use an S3 bucket, for instance, that's where you would set this up. You have uh, exporting your collections, you can do that. You can import collections if you need to. You can also load from a JSON file, so that's pretty cool. For authentication, uh, you can see here that they have added a whole bunch recently and they're going to continue adding these. Uh, in token options, you can change how long your authentication tokens are good for. So you can change all of the settings on all of your all of your tokens. So that's pretty cool. You also in your admins section can create new admins. So there is an overview of the dashboard and what is available in the dashboard. But the magic is really what's available in the back end for PocketBase. And I wanted to come up with an example of something cool that we could do that wouldn't take a ton of time and I did not need to look very far in order to be inspired. In the documentation, very first page, just after all of the links for the executables, uh, it tells you about the command that you run once you've extracted those executables and what that command does. The very first thing it says it does is create a server and this note afterwards is what inspired me it says if pb underscore public directory exists it serves the content from that directory let's make use of that in order to do something right now so go to an editor whatever editor you're using i'm using visual studio code and inside of the same directory as your executable create a new folder called pb underscore public Inside of that directory, create a new file and call this app.html. In the description of this video, you'll find a link to a gist I created that has the outline of an HTML document. So you can use that to copy this and we'll paste that in there. Now I can leave this just as is. And in fact, I will, I'm just gonna update the title to say Consulting Ninja Pocket Base and save that. And now that we have created that directory and that file, if you go to your browser and open a new tab, 
and go to localhost port 8090 slash app.html, wouldn't you know it, there is our HTML file being served by our pocket base server. So that's pretty cool. Uh, does not take long in order to make use of this stuff. I'm going to expand just a little bit further and I'm going to add a second page. So in the nav section, let's go ahead and create a new link. Call this a href and we'll just be to slash page two dot html and i'm going to cheat and uh, copy out some styles these will be available in my repository i'll have these files available in my repository as well like always now i'm just going to copy that file app.html and paste it in here again same directory, only this time I'm going to rename it to be what I named that link. So page2.html. All right, and if I refresh this now uh, with the styles I've added, now I have two pages, page one and page two. And I probably should add a link to go back. Um, that would be helpful. So if we're on page two, Let's link to page one. You can call this home page. And that will be app.html. Save that. And we don't have hot module reloading, so we do have to refresh. But now if you go to page two, you can go back and forth between home and page two. Pretty cool. The one last thing that I want to show you guys that is also pretty sweet is that the SDK is available. Uh, you can download that and I'll show you in the next video. I'm gonna do a CRUD app, but this is so lightweight. You actually can install this in your browser inside of a script tag. So to showcase that, back in the documentation, go to client side integration and click on JavaScript SDK. In the distribution folder, download the pocketbase.umd.js and the file just below that, pocketbase.umd.js.map, and place those both in the same directory as your uh, HTML files. All right. Now, in page2.html, let's go ahead and download those scripts. So let's create a script tag and say source equals pocket base. And there actually, uh, my IDE is giving me an autofill. So get your script, have the source, and this should be slash. Let's make that slash. And then another script tag. And inside this one, what we're going to do is we're going to actually fire up pocket base. So const pb equals new pocket base. And this needs the URL for where you're hosting your pocket base. So for us, it is 127.0.0.1 port 8090. And then let's make an async function and call this test pb. And what we're going to do in here is let's authenticate ourselves using the username and password that we chose earlier. Let's say const auth data equals await pb.admins dot auth with password and the way that we do this is we send our email address so consulting ninja dot tech at gmail dot com and then as your second parameter your password and I said that was PB test one, two, three. 
exclamation point asterisk. Now in the body of this, let's add a p tag with an ID of data. And you don't need to put anything in there. Let's go back up to our function. And what we're going to do inside of here is after we've ran our authentication, let's say const element, we're going to do some old school grabbing here, document.get element by, uh, whoops, don't forget your equals, get element by ID data. So after you've authenticated, you have access to an auth store. Let's use that auth store in order to dynamically change what's in that p tag to contain some information from our auth store. And in this case, I'm just going to say token dot to string. So now when this file loads, it's going to uh, also get the script, the pocket base JavaScript SDK script uh, that's also being served from our pocket base server. And then we're going to fire up a new pocket base instance and we're going to uh, define this async function that's going to authenticate us with that, our server using the username and password. And then we're going to attach the auth store token to the p tag that we just added. Now, in order to make this work, we need to actually run that function. And then we also need to refresh our page since we don't have access to pop module reloading. And if you go to page two, you can see there is the authentication token being spit out <laughs> into that p tag. So this was just a fun example of something that you could do using pocket base. You can use it to serve content. You can use it to serve the JavaScript SDK itself. And we also touched on authenticating as an admin using the username and password. Stay tuned because in the next video, I'm going to have a CRUD app using SvelteKit where we create, read, update, and destroy some records in a collection that we create. So I hope that you found this video helpful. If you did, please like and subscribe. Stay tuned and as always, have a great day. Mm -hmm.